Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we'll be discussing about string handling. Strings in Java is basically an object and it represents sequence of character values. We all know what are characters and how to represent a string as sequence of characters. For example, consider the word hello. We can represent this string hello as a combination of or as a sequence of characters H, E, L, L and O. That is why we are saying that a string is a sequence of character values. And an array of characters also behaves as a string in Java. So if we create an array of characters, if we can create an array of characters, we can convert that array into a string also. String is actually represented by a class in Java. We have a class named string. So string is not considered as a data type in Java. It's actually a class in Java. And the string class is located inside a package named java.lang. And every string that we create in Java are actually an object of this class string. So that is the difference between string and other data types in Java. String is not a data type in Java. It's actually a class. So if you write like string s, we are actually creating an object of class string, not like int a where int is a data type. So in Java, string is actually a class. And in Java, string is an immutable object. Immutable means once we have created, we cannot change that. It behaves as a constant value. So that we have to keep in mind. If you are creating a string in Java, it is considered as an immutable object. We cannot change it. We will see an example and then it will be more clear to you what does we mean by, we, uh, we mean by immutable object. Before going to an example, as I just mentioned, string is actually a class and the class string in Java implements three interfaces. And those three interfaces are serializable, comparable and char sequence. So a class can implement any number of interfaces at a time. That is how Java provides multiple inheritance or Java supports multiple inheritance. So as mentioned earlier, string is actually a class in Java and this class implements three interfaces and they are serializable, comparable and car sequence. Now we will see how to create strings in Java. There are two ways in which we can create a string in Java. Out of these two ways, the first way is by using string literals. A string literal is a string or a sentence or a word that is enclosed in a pair of double quotes. And a string literal is always considered as a string object itself. We will see an example. String str1 equal to welcome. String str2 is equal to welcome. So here str1 and str2 are string literals. As you can see, the content inside the literal is welcome, the word welcome. And it is enclosed in a pair of double quotes. So when we create a string literal, Java Virtual Machine checks a place and that place is known as string constant pool. Whenever we create a string literal, the Java Virtual Machine, that is JVM, will check a place and that place is known as the string constant pool. And what does this Java Virtual Machine checks? JVM checks whether a string already exists there with the same value. That is, as in the, in the example, we have created two string literals and both of their values is the word welcome. So when we first create this string str1 is equal to welcome, JVM checks the string constant pool and see whether there exists a word welcome already there. Since this word is not there or if this word is not there, then a new string object will be created and we are using the variable name str1 to refer to that, va that value. But second time when we create this uh, object str2, when we again write this line of code string str2 is equal to welcome, this word welcome already exists inside the string constant pool. So a separate string will not be created this time. JVM will point this str2 to this word welcome itself. I hope you understood. So if the string does not exist in the pool, a new string instance will be created. 
but if the string already exists then a new string will not be created instead of that only the literal will be pointed to the sec the already existing string and string objects in java are placed in a special memory con known as the string constant pool this picture explains what we have discussed so far we have a heap memory and inside the heap, me heap memory we have something known as a string constant pool it is this at this place at which the java maintains or, or stores all the strings created so in the previous slide we have declared two string literals namely s1 and s2 so when string s1 is equal to welcome that line of code is executed okay the jvm will check inside the string constant pool whether a string already exists with the same content assume that the the, uh, the word uh, welcome does not exist inside the string constant pool already in that situation jvm will create a new word with welcome as its content and s1 will be pointed to that word when we again create the same word again when we again use the same word as the content of the second literal say string s2 is equal to welcome jvm will again check the string constant pool but this time when the jvm checks it will find out that there exists a word welcome already there so instead of creating a new uh, string literal jvm will link the second literal that we created that is s2 to the already existing string welcome so each time when a string literal is created java virtual machine will be checking the string constant pool to verify that whether that content that string is already existing there or not if it is existing there then new literal will not be created instead of that the new literal variable will be pointed to the already existing string and why it is done like that it is done you know to make java more memory efficient because new 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 objects are created if it exists already in the string constant pool okay if the string already exists then no uh, no new objects are created i hope that the second way to create a string is by using the new keyword we have seen this new keyword somewhere else right the new keyword is used for creating objects class name space object name is equal to new constructor and we saw that a string in java is actually a class so we can create objects of class string by using the same new keyword so string s equal to new string of welcome is an example of using new keyword to create a string object so here s is the reference variable and when we create an object like this by using new keyword jvm will be creating two objects and one reference variable and jvm will be creating a new string object and it will be placed inside the heap memory and the literal in that line of code the literal is actually the word welcome it will be stored inside the string constant pool and the variable s which is of type string will be pointing to the object that is inside the heap memory from the previous slide we know what is heap memory and where it is located and where is string constant pool string constant pool is actually coming inside the heap memory so the object s will be placed inside the heap memory and the literal will be, will be placed inside the string constant pool we will see an example of creating strings so this example shows the three ways in which we can create strings okay not three ways but uh, by using by uh, we can also convert a character string into or character array into strings also that is the third uh, way i mean so we are starting a class we have right we have written the main method and see we are creating one string literal of name s1 and the value is java so when this line is executed this literal java will be placed inside the string constant pool because uh, first of all jvm will check the java string constant pool whether there exists a string with name java already there if the string java is not there already it will be creating a new string literal over there and s1 will be pointing to that literal secondly we are creating a character array named ch and we are storing the characters s t r i n g and s 
so here s is one character t is another character likewise all these are separate separate characters inside an array now we are going to create a string by using this character array or we are going to create a string out of this character array for that see we are creating the object string s2 equal to new keyword and then we are passing the character array as the parameter of the string constructor so here ch is the character array and we are passing it as an as a parameter to the string constructor so the string class has got several constructors one among them is accepting a character array as the parameter so this way also we can create string so here we are passing a character array and that this character array will be converted to a string so it will be pointed by the object s2 so here also the jvm will be storing the string after this character array inside the inside the string constant pool and s2 will be inside the heap memory it will be pointed into the object inside the heap memory and string s3 see we are creating a new object s3 with the word example we are passing that word as a parameter to a constructor so here also the object will be inside the heap and the literal example will be inside the string constant pool and then we are printing all these th three strings so we will be getting the output this figure also explains how the strings literals are created inside the string constant pool as well as heap memory the first line string s1 is equal to hello world when this line is executed jvm will check inside the string constant pool whether there exists a word hello world already there since that word is not there initially a new word will be created here when we execute the second line of code string s2 is equal to hello world again jvm will check inside this string constant pool and since jvm finds out that there exists the word hello world already there a new word will not be created instead of that s2 will be pointed to that word itself similarly when we create the third or when we execute the third line of code s3 is equal to greeting already there is no word uh, greeting inside the string constant pool so that new uh, string object will be created here and s3 will be pointed to that word and when we create an object by using new keyword so even the greeting word already exists inside the string constant pool since we are using the new keyword what happens is we are actually creating a new object and that object is, in, is, uh, is kept or stored inside the heap memory but outside the string constant pool so now you can see that two objects with same value one value is inside the string constant pool and the other one is outside the string constant pool but within the heap memory so even the words are the same this is why we said that two reference variable two objects will be created but one reference variable okay here we have two objects with same value that is greeting but there is only one reference variable to that object that is s4 s3 is another object okay that is all that points to a string inside the string constant pool okay and again when we write a string as we get hello world hello world already exists there inside the string constant pool so jvm will be linking s5 to this hello world and all the objects are stored inside the stack memory string literals will be created or will be stored inside the string constant pool and the objects will be created inside the heap memory so this is how the internal working of string creations looks like you don't, do, you don't have to buy hard this but keep in mind because sometimes you can expect see these kind of questions when you go for we shall conclude now in this video lecture we defined strings in java we find out that strings is actually a class in java and what are the different ways in which we, ca we can create strings and what is string constant pool what's heap memory how the creation of strings takes place inside the string constant pool as well as heap memory and we also saw an example of creating strings that is all in this video lecture Thank you so much.